So writing itself is a craft, I think, that I really fell in love with. And I fell in love with that in a teenage way, which I think is a subtle nod to, to poetry, because that's how a lot of teenagers get into those first writing explorations. And so I became a very avid uh, a poetic teller of my experiences, which I took to be very important experiences. And um, so I wrote a lot like that. And then, and then with that commission came the idea that, yes, maybe I, I focus on a subject that isn't me, which I think was a really important lesson and kind of set in motion everything that I now try to write about. Um, and, yeah, you know, the, the sheer nature of kind of placing oneself in the head of another yeah. and imagining what they would say and what ripple effects that sentence said at that volume to that person would then have on those around them. And then watching that kind of dramatic effect of people bouncing off against each other and the innate theatricality that's formed from that. So, so that's the pursuit that I go on every time I set the computer. And you write every day? What, mm -hmm. What's your practice? How do you approach the process? Well, weekends are weekends, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, essentially, Essie, Essie has a, you know, a nine to five -y job. And so I have crafted a nine to five -y structure because when she's around, I want to be around her. And, um, and when she's away, I don't want to, you know... Breathe anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, want to, I want to do something practical, and so writing seems to be the thing I love. <laughs> um, uh, I am a romantic, but not You are, much. I know. That's great. <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, I, I write very fastidiously, and I write to a pattern that, that I feel very comfortable with, and it's one that uh, really has results. Like, it means I can meet deadlines, and because I'm a commissioned writer, I write to commissions that I get given by companies here in Australia and worldwide, and so I have very big deadlines which design teams need to see words by so they can start creating. Uh, I have troops of actors who need to know who they're supposed to be. You know, I have people who give me large amounts of money, or amounts of money, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that I am indebted to give something back yeah. to. And um, yeah, so absolutely, I, I like to regard it as very much an art and get all of that out of it, but also a business. Mm -hmm. And that means that I don't get lazy about it, I don't get self-indulgent about it, and I always acknowledge that first and foremost, a piece of theatre is about the audience. And, you know, all the stages it has to go through prior to that, I mean, they're the ones who it's actually th for. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't finish the script and then it's ready. It has to go through a company. A uh, company often can't do stuff without those words uh, uh, at the starting point. And so, yeah, I mean, that is the nature of what I do. Yep. I don't just write for me or unending deadlines. I write for that audience moment. So when you've written a play and you've delivered it to the rehearsal room, there's a, there's a letting go step for the writer. You've been in charge of it. You've had control. You've given the script. But then the actors, the directors, the designers, they're going to chop it around, mm -hmm. play with it, maybe go, why is that bit in there? Mm -hmm. How do you cope with that process? Yeah, OK. I said this to all the actors on the first day, actually. I'm a complete scaredy cat. I can't bear witness to that process because it is brutal and it has to be. A director and a cast have to put the words through their paces and really treat them badly and then rediscover them in their own voice and, and make it theirs. And I wholly understand that process and it's a hard one to watch. So I hand over a play and I don't go near a rehearsal room generally. Like I, I really, and I don't care what a company does with it, to be honest. I, I like turning up on an opening night and being surprised. As long as all the words are there, then I think, you know, the bit that I wanted set in stone is set in stone. I don't even really write stage directions. This one's an old play, so or four years old, so it's got more stage directions than I ever have now. Uh, because I think that's the director's word to say, he is lying in a bed, you know, she is taking her shoes off. I mean, who am I to, to kind of dictate that? So, so I really believe that it's my prerogative to put every thought and intonation I need to in the words that are spoken and the punctuation that surrounds those words. And if you get the dot, 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 then I'll love you forever. And if you change the dot, dot, dot to a small pause, I'll appreciate it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs>
if you own that pause and you nail it, then cool, you know? Like, um, yeah, and, and I do like to think, I mean, maybe that's a bit presumptuous, but that I write a play and it will have one incarnation with one company, but it will have another incarnation with another. And I like to think that each of those will be slightly different. And some opening nights I've turned up to, the vast majority I've turned up to, and they were vastly different than I imagined and better than I imagined. Some I've turned up to and the directors I felt were quite scared and they were pretty much what I imagined. Mm -hmm. It was quite adhering to what was on the, mm -hmm. you know, on the script. And a couple I've turned up to and I didn't like and, and that was fine, I thought, because <laughs> other people like them and an audience member is an audience member. That's all I become when I sit there. I have as much right to like or dislike as anyone else and so it doesn't matter, you know, my value judgment isn't worth any more than anyone else's, so, yeah. Amazing. Uh, advice to a young person wanting to start as a writer? Uh, Apart from all the bits we've heard, is there anything else that you, you'd suggest? Um, make sure you're safe in terms of the Writers Guild or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, share it. Don't become that hermetic notion of a, of a writer, you know, the, the, the again, person right? locked away. Yeah. Um, uh, autobiography can be an alright starting point as long as quite quickly the character morphs into something that isn't you because well yeah, you know, there's the danger that only you will appreciate what they're going through <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, share it because, because you, need to, you need to know how it's working for a person who is an audience member uh, share it with people who aren't artists because they give really important feedback. Um, uh, use big words and words that you're proud of uh, while you're developing. <laughs> and then once you reach a point where you feel comfortable in yourself, cut all those words <laughs> out <laughs> and just use the right words. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you.